Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Command. I'm Ruben and this is part 2 in our Duna Base series. By the end of this video we'll have our parts in Duna orbit. We'll also have a Kerbal on the ground. Now this here is a probe for Duna. On the other side the part you just watched Doc was a little lander that'll be able to ferry Kerbals from the, from the base back into orbit. Now it's delivering some parachutes that I neglected for the connectors. Now here we're doing a burn to get to Moon. The idea is we'll get to Moon refuel, break moon orbit, and then when the Duna transfer window opens we'll dive at Kerbin, slingshot around it, and make our Duna encounter. Here Valentina is going to take over command of the refueler. D and Kerman has been flying it since I launched the, since I launched the refueler. Dian's new orders are to oversee the construction of Duna base. The refueler was far from full when I launched it from moon station. I was hoping it would have more fuel when I made the rendezvous, but this will have to do. I forgot about the crew transfer, so after, Dian had to EVA her way back to Reliant. Fortunately, we weren't too far when I realized my mistake. With the crew all on board, we can begin our burn for Moon Station. Reliant just about ran out of fuel doing an anti-radial burn, so I had to send a transfer stage out from Moon Station to intercept Reliant. The intercept occurred just before Moon Periapsis. After we docked and transferred fuel, it was a simple matter of rendezvousing with Moon Station. Safely docked at Moon Station, we refilled the orange tank. The next step was to leave Moon Orbit. Our final orbit is one slightly higher than Moon's. And now high above our tiny world we'll wait for the Duna transfer window to open. The transfer window opens when Duna is 44 degrees in front of Kerbin in its orbit. Once Duna is in position we can begin the next phase of our journey, our dive at Kerbin. This Kerbin dive is going to cost us about 320 meters per second in Delta V. Once that burn is complete, we'll have one final major burn. That'll be our Transduna injection burn. We're going to do that near Kerbin Periapsis. Until then, we have to wait for the ship to fall towards Kerbin. Our Transduna injection burn will cost us 200 meters per second in Delta V. Once we reach the node, we'll begin the burn. With our burn complete, we're no longer in Kerbin orbit. Our trajectory will carry us through Duna's sphere of influence. Now just because we're going through Duna's sphere of influence doesn't mean we're going to be anywhere close to Duna when we do. So we're going to need to make a course correction to change our trajectory closer to the planet. Also, I want to be in a near equatorial orbit, and the best place to do that course correction is at the ascending and descending nodes. We want our trajectory close to the planet's surface. We're going to perform an arrow capture maneuver. So as we get closer, we're going to do another course correction that'll take our trajectory through Duna's atmosphere. Now 
Uh, here the red and white trajectories are provided by the trajectories mod. It'll show what your trajectory will be after you arrow break. After that we did another arrow break maneuver and then circularized our orbit. Once in a stable orbit we can send down our first part. We'll give our movers a suborbital trajectory. Once that's done, we'll head back to the ship. Looks like we could have used another couple parachutes as we're coming in too fast. Looks like two wheels survived the impact. And this is where I learned the Kerbal Engineer needs to have a skill level of three to fix wheels. But not to worry, we're Kerbals. Those two remaining wheels are more than enough. Now we just need to find a flat area so we can begin to build our base. This might take a while. We're going to keep driving around looking for that perfect spot to build. In the next part, we'll send down our first modules. So that's it for this episode. See you next time.